In this video, I'm going to explain how you, as a beginner in microsclerotherapy, can avoid the common problem of brown marks and staining after microsclerotherapy. Hello, my name is Dr. Haroon Gadraj. I'm a vein specialist with years of experience of running a successful private clinic. I'm here to offer training and coaching to healthcare professionals. If you're a doctor or a nurse and you have just started injecting leg spider veins by microsclerotherapy, you know just how frequently brown marks and staining occur after a session of microsclerotherapy. In the literature, the published reported short-term incidence of pigmentation ranges from 10 to 30%. And post-sclerotherapy pigmentation is usually due to a combination of both melanin and hemosiderin pigment deposits. Melanin is formed as part of the natural healing process after microsclerotherapy. Um, it's part of the uh, post-inflammatory uh, pigmentation and hemosiderin is derived from extravasated red cells, red cells that have left the blood vessels and entered the interstitium and deposited iron into the uh, tissues. Now, in my opinion, I think the reported incidence is, is much lower than it actually occurs. I think some degree of pigmentation after sclerotherapy occurs in all cases, if you look closely enough. So what we're really talking about here in this video is excessive hyperpigmentation, the sort that goes on for 12 months and causes distress to your patients. What can you do about this? Well, I'm going to cover the four major reasons why excessive hyperpigmentation develops after microsclerotherapy, and I'm going to tell you what you can do about it. And if you stay to the end, I'll share with you my top tip for dealing with established brown marks marks that persist beyond 12 months so that you can avoid complications and complaints from your, uh, from your patients. Now, the first reason is that the sclerosant used was too strong. This is the usual and most common reason. For leg spider veins and blue veins, reticular veins, I advise liquid polydocanol, also called ethoxysclerol, at 0.5%. Or you can use um, sodium tetradecyl sulfate, fibrovein, uh, at 0.2%. And I suggest that you stick with the liquid and avoid foam. Foam is much stronger, even at the same concentration. And if hyperpigmentation continues to be a problem in your practice, consider diluting it down uh, to 0.5% polydocanol and 0.1% uh, STD. Now, the second reason uh, is the presence of persistent reflux in the associated reticular veins, perhaps a small perforated vein, or even there's reflux from an adjacent varicose vein. So if this is a problem, re-examine the area under the brown marks and staining with a transillumination device such as vein light, and check for varicose veins with your patient in the standing position. And you might also want to check for persistent reflux in and around the brown marks with high frequency ultrasound. Now, finding a small perforator vein or a small reticular vein can be difficult even with high frequency ultrasound. So if you think that might be a problem, consider referral to an, a more experienced colleague um, if you think that might be helpful and appropriate. The third reason is that there is major reflux in a truncal vein, such as the um, saphenous vein, the great saphenous vein or the small saphenous vein. Now, this can be an issue, particularly if spider veins are clustered around the ankle, even in the absence of varicose veins. And the condition is called corona phlebectatica. And you should consider examining your patient, uh, particularly if they're around the ankle. You should consider examining your patient uh, with a complete venous duplex ultrasound scan. Now, the fourth reason is that there has been excessive thrombus formation after the microsclerotherapy injection session. Now, all sclerosants work by removing the delicate lining of the, uh, the vein, the endothelium, and they initiate a local thrombus reaction clot within the vessel. If this clot is excessive, the presence of the clot uh, stimulates continued inflammation and this inflammation will cause uh, hyperpigmentation 
and the clot will eventually extravasate through the blood vessel and deposit iron into the tissues. Now in some cases um, excessive thrombus formation can be reduced by applying a compression bandage immediately afterwards and um, you can also uh, reduce the amount of thrombus after sclerotherapy by asking your patient to wear compression stockings. In addition, uh, many specialists, myself included, recommend that you see patients two weeks after microsclerotherapy. And if there is any uh, thrombus present, which will be um, obvious because the area will be perhaps hard and tender, you can prick these areas um, with a needle using an aseptic technique and release the thrombus. So there you are the four major reasons why you might encounter excessive hyperpigmentation and I've explained what you can do about it. Now at the beginning of this video I told you I was going to give you my top tip for reducing complaints in patients who've got established hyperpigmentation. Um, I call it perhaps a little um, flippantly phototherapy and um, it's not um, what you might think it actually consists of uh, developing a routine of taking photographs um, before treatment, uh, immediately afterwards, and at all the follow-up appointments. And in this way, you can establish what's happened, how much pigmentation there is. If your patient's unhappy with the brown marks, you can offer to see them regularly and review the photographs with them sympathetically. You may need to see them every six months for two to three years, because it really can take that long for hyperpigmentation which has been established to fade and of course if you need to go through the other bits that I've discussed before you need to re-examine them check for persistent reflux and so forth but this approach of phototherapy seeing your patient regularly photographing them and reviewing the photographs should reassure them that the brown marks are fading and you can see them until they've faded sufficiently now, as far as I'm aware, there are no proven methods to remove brown marks once they've become fully established. Um, I've, got, I've had conversations with colleagues about anecdotal reports of using hydroquinones, um, of using carboxytherapy, people have tried laser, uh, transdermal laser, but as far as I'm aware, there are no randomized trials proving that you can remove successfully can remove hyperpigmentation and in my opinion if it is established phototherapy is the best strategy for dealing with the problem now of course avoiding the problem or mitigating the problem in the first instance is better still and we've covered that in this video well thank you for staying to the end uh, I hope you have found this helpful if you have please consider uh, hitting the like button it really does help my channel and check out all the links in the description box below where you'll find also a link to my free mini course on how to inject leg spider veins. It's packed with useful tips uh, on injection technique and why not uh, subscribe to my channel by clicking the button here uh, and that way you'll be informed about my next video. I look forward to seeing you again in due course. Thank you for watching.